Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Phil Jones. I'm the technical editor for Projector Reviews, and welcome to our Fall Projection Summit. We have a special guest, um, Elite Screens, and hi, me from Elite Screens. Before we get started, we'd have to always got to thank our sponsor, Sony, for if not, we would not have been able to make this possible. So this gives us an opportunity, Jaime, to, instead of me seeing you at a show, I can actually talk to you here, which is kind of nice. You know, I'd much rather be having a cocktail somewhere um, talking about product, but hey, I think this will actually do. So um, one thing that we've been talking about a lot is a projector is just part of a um, projection system. And, and, and Jaime's gonna talk about all of his stuff that they make, because how many screens um, I was looking on your website because like you guys have taken care of me with um, whiteboard samples for reviews and my reference white screen in my in my um in my office is an elite screen. So you guys have always taken care of me um, along the way. And you and one thing I've noticed is if I need something or I, I have a unique request, you guys have one of the largest varieties and selections and options that are out there when it comes to how the screen goes up and down what type of materials you're going to use and what type of applications you're trying to use them for. So we're going to take a little bit of time and cover some of these screens. Now I noticed that there's three different divisions here. Could you explain this to me? So, um, and, and, uh, and my little crew of interested people. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so we do have elite screens, which is the dot com. This is the, the mother of the brand. Uh, and we started elite screens in 2004 as an accessory to projectors, where projectors at that time were uh, very costly and even screens at that point. And so what uh, ownership realized was that, hey, um, we need to uh, offer customers an affordable solution so that they can also enjoy a projection system. So that's okay. the bread and butter, uh, the dot-com retail uh, lead screens. And now EPV was established in 2012 and it's a division of the lead screens as well, and it's dedicated to the CI channel, so the CDM market, dedicated to the to the dealer, to the installer, integrator. Okay, so, so so Jaime, so that means you have something for that traditional end user, user that wants to do it themselves, or like maybe and um something for that IT person or that or that school or that professional application, and then something for the custom integration market. So that's maybe that's the reason why your selection of products is so robust so so we could spend we could spend a day just talking about all of the different stuff that you guys make but i think we we want to focus a little bit on the on the ultra short throw type applications and you actually sent me this image and it really made me laugh but it's it's actually really true so do you want to talk about what's going on here? I, I think it really does kind of make the point. Yeah, so ultra short of projection, right? Uh, then, which was a CRT TV, which not the tube type, but the projector type, because we're talking about screens and projection mm -hmm. projectors. So you got the Klaus Noble beam there, which is a mm -hmm. big unit, and it used to come with a screen as well. I believe it was, uh, I think it was an angular reflective or maybe retro reflective. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. But now you have laser TVs, and that's what we want to get into, you know, uh, since we didn't have Cedia, Infocom, mm -hmm. and obviously now CES, this was all product that we were going to showcase, and now that we're going into laser TV and the placement for your typical TV, uh, that's what we really want to talk about and discuss about all of our uh, material options that we have available and product that is going to be available as well. Yes. Yeah. So... So and that's kind of funny. It's it, it just goes to show you that even from the '60s and the fifth and that if you wanted a, the biggest image in your home, <laughs> projection's the way to go. And they've been working on ways to to make it work even in brighter environments and things like that. But now because um, of 4K ultra short throw smart laser projectors, which everybody just calls laser TVs, now you don't have to worry about the bulbs. They're bright enough. And and um, it has all the smart apps. It's got the sound. So the main thing is there's three parts to a system. There's the the projector, the screen, and the room. And a lot of times the room <laughs> makes it difficult for the screen and the projector. So a lot of these materials that Jaime's going to talk about today help you overcome 
these these issues. And and like I said, one of the things I like about your image as well is the fact that the photo is taken of an actual <laughs> room. A lot of times we see a lot of Photoshop stuff where the room looks like it's daytime and it's all, you know. Um, so this actually gives you a much more realistic thing. This is a fixed screen, but there's also other solutions. So let's go in and talk about the different materials that you make. So, so you make um, a ton of different materials to do like we just talked about this ultra show throw experience where I can, in my room, I can actually utilize it even when there's ambient light. So let's talk about some of these materials. Can you go through and explain the difference between like Dark Star, UST, and two and, and things like that? Exactly, yes, I sure will. So the Dark Star UST was the original um, ultra short throw ambient light rejecting screen material that we came out with mm -hmm. a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. And that um, rejects up to 95% of ceiling ambient light from above. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a uh, lower gain, but it's black, more black. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what you're able to achieve these great black levels mm -hmm. and the color purity, which is, you know, important for contrast, the rich imagery. And so that one is only limited to 120 inches in a fixed frame and a uh, electric wall ceiling or floor rising um, mm -hmm. uh, type of uh, product. Mm -hmm. Then we come out with the Dark Star UST2, which is a little bit more uh, spec wise, is less um, than the uh, Dark Star UST, which is, has 85% ambient light rejection, a little bit of a bump in the gain, mm -hmm. and a, a little bit narrower viewing angle. It's still not very noticeable, mm -hmm. but it still works the same way, and we're able to make it a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. and we're able to even accommodate uh, in a folding frame type and a mm -hmm. tripod type and a regular wall mount. Uh, okay. Yeah, so so um, one thing too that I, that's kind of right out the box, a lot of the original ultra short throw material because of how the material was done was rigid. You could not roll it up. It was always a fixed frame. So it looks like you guys have always had the ability to make that screen disappear if that was a, um, a customer's option. So, so that's kind of neat. So now you have more sizes and different types of materials and then all the so what is the little 60 the little folding frame would that be more like a what would be the application for the for the small 16 by 9 small is that for like outdoor tv um uh that type of stuff is that what that's for it could be although we don't advise it just because it's like it, for example here in my <laughs> neck of the yeah. woods there's a lot of mosquitoes <laughs> and things of that nature <laughs> that <tip. laughs> That could uh, land on the material. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made the mistake of taking my sample, my little sample here, which I'll show you later. Talk about that a little bit later. And I was watching uh, a game out there just to prove that it's very capable of projecting light and all that good stuff. And something died on there. <laughs> and the material, <laughs> because of the sensitivity, I was not able to remove that. But you could at your own risk. But mainly this product is for the portable presenter that is battling ah. with matte white tripods. You cannot see what they're trying to present, especially with dark presentations. Like hotels, um, small conference rooms and hotels, um, guys that are going, you know, doing sales calls and you have to travel. Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. It's big enough that you can actually see it from, a, from enough feet away from a conference table. Um, but then you can just make it disappear and and make it really portable. So the material is lenticular, right? So just like just like um, so it does reject light from only accept light from one direction. Um, yeah. And it uh, with so like we were just talking, if you decide you want to mount your ultra short throw on the ceiling, you gotta flip it around. But <laughs> well, a lot of times when you flip it around. The ceiling lights are up there, <laughs> so it always <laughs> seems the best way to do it to put the ultra short throw on a table and use it the proper the proper way. So we have two different types of materials. I like your fixed frame, so why don't you talk about your fixed frame real quick? Yeah, the fixed frame is a very thin, we call it edge-free bezel, which is uh, mm -hmm. about maybe uh, six millimeters or maybe a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. And that really allows us to maximize the projection area instead of wasting space using those three and a half inch velvet borders that we were, that we were used to, we just maximize the space, the, the viewing area, of course, here. And uh, they're very uh, aluminum lightweight. 
they're six piece, so they're they ship in small boxes. You don't have to uh, carry this big giant size TV <laughs> and try to get it into a home around the corner and uh, you know all yeah. that stuff. And now that, that's a that's a big point. I know you're using is that it looks like a a VPZ yeah. 1000 Sony. And I remember mm -hmm. when I when I was working at um, Sony. And the that projector came out. The only the only ultra short throw screen that was out at that time was a fixed hundred inch. <laughs> yeah. And trying to get that thing in an elevator <laughs> in a hotel to take up to a ballroom to do a demonstration was an absolute nightmare because yeah. and um and then trying to keep it from getting dented and scratched. So to put to protect the screen because we were taking it place to place to place, they made a wood crate for it, which made it even bigger. So you couldn't get it in anywhere. So I like the fact that you can actually, um, it comes packed compactly. So you can actually, like we always joke, get it up into a third floor New York walk up uh, and set it up. The projector's small, the screen is easy to maneuver. Once you get up there, you put it in there and you can have a big, big screen, but you can get it from place to place to place. And like I said, I still like the fact that those photos, those are actual photos. Some people just don't like being in the dark. My um, Diane, I'm a projector person, but a lot of times she doesn't want to be sitting in the pitch black and the kids as well. So, so this makes it far, far, far more usable. And it's beautiful because it's all, it's all picture all the time. So yeah. now these are the ones that I am jazzed about because I love USC screens that either go up mm -hmm. um, from the floor or come down from the ceiling. So why don't you talk about these guys? Yeah, so these are our Dark Star USC. And just to keep it short, we'll just call them electric freestanding rise up screens. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have their names, but I'll, I'll leave it in the handout because it's a mouthful. But um, these are, um, they rise up and they have a black leader. Um, we're working on maybe increasing that leader or actually, uh, actually we're redesigning them so that we can actually have a bracket so that mm -hmm. you can attach it to the wall. So that way you don't have to, uh, you know, think about another cabinet or because we are going to make it up to 120. So, you know, mm -hmm. cabinets that big may not be available yet. I know the hundreds are, mm -hmm. but um, these uh, rise up from the floor and they come with standard uh, infrared and radio frequency remote controls mm -hmm. and a wireless uh, 12 volt projector trigger as well. Mm -hmm. So is there a price for these yet? Because I'm I'm very curious because I'm thinking bedroom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, like um, half the reason why I got into this gig was because I get to play with stuff that I could never, I couldn't afford. And then also I get to experiment with cool things to find what I really want. And every once in a while I find something that I go, I could find a application for that in my own home. So what is, so, so what if with like a hundred inch of this, do you have any idea? Yeah, the 100 inch uh, will have an MSRP of 39.99. 39.99, but that's mm -hmm. really really cool because if you think about it, like I said, you get the LG that you have here or the little the the little Vavo we were just talking about, and for literally six six thousand, a little bit over six thousand dollars, you can make the whole thing disappear. So exactly. you put this and you put the you know you can put the Vava on the stand, pull the cabinet out a little bit, put this on the wall like behind the cabinet so it's flush it it magically appears in front of the painting and all your 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 the design committee's artwork and then when you're when it's done it it drops back down and it goes away and most projectors have 12 volt triggers and things like that or you have a control system and it's just movie time there's a big picture and then when the movie's done it goes down and it's a lot easier to deal with one of these than trying to run power up to the ceiling to have it come from the come down from the from the ceiling. So I think exactly. I think these are really 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 cool. So yeah, we uh, got our first batch and they sold out already. We introduced them at Cedia last year, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, we got the first batch and we had back orders. Mm -hmm. And due to the situation, we weren't able to produce them as fast. But as soon as we got them in, um, they they're out. So we will okay. be seeing some for a little while, but mm -hmm. we hope uh, to bring them in some more before the end of the year. Okay, and it's only the USD. It's, it's not the two. It's just the US, the standard dark star material, right? It's not the second Correct. version. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. it's preferred version. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that actually has higher light rejection. You know, exactly. and a lot of these and a lot of these laser projectors are getting super bright anyway. So, so that is a good thing. Now we're going to be doing some reviews of several of of um of elite screens per um, screens in the next few months, and we'll talk and doing those reviews. We're going to do also videos to talk about how they mount, um, what what's in the box, and all of that stuff. So, as, so please check out our site, and um and you'll be able to see all um as we go through and talk about all of the different options because they're going to be sending me. I already have two in my garage right now that I got to get on <laughs> right after I finish this whole projector summit thing. The 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 next thing is so you have the the drop down, which is like I said. Um, it used to be that material like this had to be fixed to the wall. So now you can have it come arise from the wall and now come down from the wall. So so this is the same thing, right? And this is still this UST material? Yes, it is. Correct. That's still the dark side UST. And the limit on that is 120 inches. And that one is already shipping. So we have our first batch that we uh, received a couple of months ago. And I believe I owe you one of these so that you can uh, review it. So, yes, uh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but one of the thing I like about these, and I like the fact if you look at this picture, there's a lot of applications for this. So, yes, mm -hmm. there's the person in their home that wants to ha what to use a ultra short throw projector for their TV, and then when it's off, they can make it disappear. But there's a lot of places where I have you that when you look at professional applications, whether it's in a classroom or whether it's in a conference room where this is so much nicer. Um, a conference room looks a lot cleaner with an ultra short throw in the front of the room in a cabinet than having a projector hanging down from the, from the ceiling above the boardroom table. So it, 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 there is lots of applications that go way, 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 way beyond just being in a home. And I noticed this is under your pro lineup, right? Which is, which means it's probably one of the reasons why it probably came out because the pro guys were probably asking for this. Um, so that one has a list price, the MSRP for the 100 inch, if you guys are curious, of uh, 28 99 just in case. Okay. So the uprising is gonna, just gonna be, I guess the uprising, cause you gotta have like the metal, the, you gotta have the linkage and stuff behind it and stuff. It's gonna make it just a more complex mechanism which is one of the reasons why you pay a premium for that type of design, correct? Exactly, correct. So, and then we have our um, our fixed frame, like we talked about it, and a hundred at that, so a, a hundred twenty inch fixed frame, because we're not going up and down. How much is that guy? This, this one here is actually from the Dark Star USD two, which is a hundred and twenty three inch. Now we're uh, looking at the, uh, the USD two, which actually I'm gonna take a. Give you guys a sneak peek here. Uh, I mean, Excellent. a peek Hold at the actual materials. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the one so that's right the, here, the darker one. Yes. So this that's is the darker the one. It looked, it looked like, you know what? You know what's cool about that? If you the way you had it, it looked like mm -hmm. a piece. It looked completely black. And yeah, so that exactly. is that is that is pretty cool. So those are the two differences between those two materials. Correct, and that's why wow. the specs are a little bit different. So this one is a yeah. you know the the cream of the crop. Uh, the mm -hmm. flagship, which is a dark star USP, the first one that we're talking about, and then the dark star mm -hmm. USP two, which is this one right here. It's mm -hmm. not as black, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, if you compare these two by side, yes, of course, there's going to be big differences. But when you mm -hmm. compare it against a matte white, which is what we're after, it's, huge. Mm -hmm. it's a big difference. So I'll be sending okay. you this one as well to in a fixed okay. form. The other thing that's kind of cool, pick a hold that black one back up, Javier, straight up and down like you had it. This is the mm -hmm. black one, just the black one, because I want to show people. Just grab the black one here. Yeah. Hold it like this, and then swing it around, because that's one of them what we used to always do. Like you notice that it's black. When uh, that that is the quickest way to show someone the difference between light rejecting and not light rejecting. There we go. Yeah. So it yeah. rejects light from the white when it's white, and if you turn it around, um, that is what comes the the black that you see. So you yeah, can actually it's... see how much of effect this is. So we're gonna mm -hmm. say. Yeah. So yeah, the, the the bottom layer is is at the bottom, and and the black layer is at the top. This is what the what absorbs the light from above. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can really see that that material is actually doing something. And why, if you decide you want to mount your your ultra short throw on the ceiling, you gotta rotate it. Because <laughs> yeah, you you're like, why is my projector so dark? You know? Oh yeah, because we've gotten some RMAs on that. <laughs> 
my projector's <laughs> broken. When I look into it, it's super bright. But when I look at it on your screen, it looks like it's making no picture. Uh, I think you mounted your screen wall. upside down. <laughs> it looked better on my wall. I think you mounted yeah. your screen upside yeah. down. Turn it around. Yeah. Oh, now it looks right. Yeah. So, so I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure I've heard that a million, Anytime. a million oh. times. Okay. So yeah. So that's an that's really, really, really impressive. And it's cool how you can see that on camera right off the bat. Right off the bat. Yeah. So we're making this 123 inches. Uh, I know that uh, some manufacturers have already announced certain projectors that can go mm -hmm. up to 130. Uh, our goal is to get there one day, but uh, due to the uh, manufacturing process, this is our limit for now. Uh, and, you know, we always want to go bigger. So, mm -hmm. you know, maximize um, the uh, projection area, your UST laser projector. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, my friend Gary online is asking, okay. what screen is behind you? That's one of the little fold-ups we were just talking about, right? That's a little guy. Um, Correct. So that right there is going to utilize this new dark star ust material and it's mm -hmm. going to be for the pro av channel mm -hmm. again tackling the tripod matte white mm -hmm. so this right here yeah. is going to have uh, it's it's a it's, it's just, um ultra short throw uh mm -hmm. ambient light projecting tripod screen yeah so you could grab a a small um laser dlp projector and that screen and quickly take it from one conference room to another and set up or from one event to another, grab that screen and a little 2000 lumen DLP projector and take that to a um, to a, an event and have it sitting in the back of your booth, you know, to show all the different stuff. It, it makes it very portable and, and it, it gives you a lot of options. Exactly. Can you show me how the folding mechanism works on that guy? Were you gonna, could you do that or is he, or am I putting you on the spot? No, no, which one? The the tripod one? The, the little guy behind you, the tripod guy. It, is it like the pole in the back and you just unhook yes. it and it drops down? Okay. Yes, it's a tripod, so you just bring it down. Mm -hmm. And how big you is the, have... and the, and you just fold that down, right? And then the case is, is, is pretty, is pretty compact, which is kind of neat. Yeah, uh, so there's, so there's a barrel. You just swing it around, and it locks uh -huh. this right here, and you okay. just carry it. And it'll it'll come with a with a carrying case, and it also mm -hmm. come with this drape kit here with a skirt to give it a okay to make it nice and clean. Well. Make it nice and clean. Exactly. All right, that's that's really 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 cool. And that's this guy right here. So it, so is that different, um, Jaime? Then so that's this guy right here that we were just that we were just going to talk about, right? That's this guy. So, so that would be the one on this side of the, that you just, that, that you were just showing me, correct? Exactly. That would be at that 55 inch four by three. And you can shrink it down to 50 inch, 16 by nine. Obviously you can mm -hmm. just bring it down. You don't have to utilize that whole four by three screen. You can shrink it down mm -hmm. a little bit, bring it to yeah. 50 inch. Yeah. 16 yeah. By yeah. Nine. But if you think about moving that versus actually trying to drag a 60 inch TV from place to place to place, yeah. this is going to be a lot cooler. Now, one of our reviewers, Nikki, is actually doing working, um, doing something with your. Um, you're kind of getting into the projector business too, and it comes with the screen. So, so, uh, and then you're also looking at these. Is, is these the new outdoor ones, right? That's a new outdoor um, screen that you're using there, a little portable outdoor screen. Which, what's up with these guys right here? On, on okay, this side so that screen. right there also is going to utilize the Dark Star UST2 material, and that's going to mm -hmm. be also a solution for the traveling mm -hmm. presenter. Um, mm -hmm. The tripod obviously is one of them, and the um, this folding frame is going to be another solution. This one okay. can go up to okay. 60 inches, and um, okay. let me show you real quick okay. if you don't mind. Okay, okay, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to just turn over the camera right slightly right there if you can okay, see there it is you see I it right see there yeah all right so that's our portable screen here you can see i put a mm -hmm. little matte white patch there to show you uh -huh. how, yeah you uh, could see a big difference there you can't even read the you can't even read the score or the numbers or anything in the white side but when the score comes up on the other one you can read it you can see a big difference in contrast absolutely all right so i'll just take this off real quick just to show you guys how, how, how it'll go together. So it'll be buttoned up mm -hmm. and it'll have Velcro on the side so you guys can create more tension and get that mm -hmm. nice flat projection surface for your 
also short throw display. Now this okay. is also and it's, uh, mm -hmm. so ultra light. That's probably a, because you could just break it down like that. It probably doesn't weigh hardly anything. Yeah, it doesn't. And it breaks down. It'll actually also have adjustable height legs, so you can move it up higher. Mm -hmm. So 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 you can clear you know a conference room table, mm -hmm. or if you just want to just you know. Um, um, Show it up higher, and if you have a standing um, mm -hmm. room, a standing audience, mm -hmm. and it'll come in a little bag as well. Um, I can't, mm -hmm. or you can't see it there, but mm -hmm. it'll 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 be very portable. And this is exactly mm -hmm. what we're listening. Or usually, when we go to Infocom, they're asking for what about your portable ALR solution? What do you <laughs> got? Do you have mm -hmm. something for me yet? And I go, well, at that moment we didn't, but now mm -hmm. we're bringing it little by little. Hotel rooms, temporary classrooms, boardrooms, conference rooms. Um, I can see people really gravitating towards towards that product. And a large part of the business is goes beyond, like we were talking about, it goes beyond just the the person looking for the screen in their home. Well, there's other places, whether it's your your business applications and 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 classroom applications that you could use it for. And then you also have ambient light rejecting screens for standard throw projectors. I will tell you that um, you can't use the ultra short throw screen <laughs> with the standard projector because the approach angles, the, exactly. the one for the standard projector is trying to lock light okay. from extreme angles and an mm -hmm. ultra short throw projector is making light come from an extreme angle. Uh, the ultra short throw screen is trying to reject light that's not coming from one specific angle and your projector is projecting at the wrong angle if you're using a standard projector. So buy the screen that works with the proper application, correct? Correct, yeah. So here we're looking at a portable ambient light rejecting tripod. Again, for those customers that are looking for um, ditch the matte white, as you can see here, this presenter here, mm -hmm. you can't even make out what he's what he's trying to present with all yeah. that light up there. Yes. And in that comparison, you can see all the detail loss in the brown door, and mm -hmm. just the colors aren't there. And as mm -hmm. you can see right here, in the with the uh, Epson projector there, you can mm -hmm. see that the Cinegrade 5D is just mm -hmm. maintaining that rich color uh and it's maintaining obviously the brightness as well yeah yeah and i've been in many many conference rooms well yeah where people want the lights up high enough that the it seems like no conference room has most of these conferences don't have multi-zone lighting so you're not going to be able to turn down the light on the screen and leave the light where people can actually round a piece of paper and i can't tell you how many places and times i've been in these conference rooms where Either the people can't see their paper and they're using their phone to try to write stuff down uh, <laughs> because they have to have the light so low you could actually read. So in order to get the number I want to write off the screen, I have to use my phone to write on my on my piece of paper. <laughs> or and by the time I get it where I can actually read, I can't read what's on the screen. So 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 yeah. So you could see why um, these um, light rejecting has. Um, has has been beneficial it's also beneficial the fact that the pros are looking for this has is one of the reasons why it's becoming more affordable to you consumers if you're consumers out there because it's all about volume baby and if and if everybody wants that type of has an application for it um there's an economies of scales there economy of scale there which makes it easier for you to get stuff just um the second they want it to go up and down from the floor or come down from the ceiling means that they start making more mechanisms and now you as a consumer can actually get it at a at a better value. So the fact that everybody sees a benefit to these types of materials means that everybody they they, they can make more of them and everybody gets a better deal on them because they're making it in bulk. Would that be kind of a good way of saying it, um Jaime? Yes, exactly. Yes, I mean the the demand is there and has been and yes it's, it's, it's made it more attainable for everybody to enjoy uh mm -hmm. you know a two-piece projection system not just in the dark and yes it, it in the dark it puts me to sleep <laughs> <laughs> I, get it. I get it <laughs> now there's a few more materials we want to cover um mm -hmm. there's another one you have here called cinegray can you talk about what this is 
Yes, that centigrade 5D is actually what we use for standard throw projectors. It's an angular reflective material, which means angle in, angle out. If you are not, if your projector is angled incorrectly, it'll bounce off in the wrong direction. And that's why you had mentioned that ultra short throws will not work because of that, that narrow uh, upward um, throw is going to reject it up into the ceiling instead of going back to, your, to the sweet spot. So the way this particular material works is it has metallic particles inside, as you can see there. There's mm -hmm. an absorbent side, which is metallic, and then the, uh, and then the, the absorbent side, I'm, the, I'm, I'm sorry, the absorbent side, which is the back, it's a black layer, uh, and then a reflective side, which is metallic. So a lot of people have, have always asked, why is your Cinegrade 5D 3D materials, why do I mm -hmm. see speckling? That's exactly why, because we use a little bit of metallic in there to up the gain and to reflect light off. So side lighting gets reflected off, top lighting gets reflected off, and it only accepts light from your projector source, angle in, angle out. Yeah. Well, the, the, the cool thing about this when you look at this is it makes you realize how much work and science goes into making these materials. You know, <laughs> it isn't just a white sheet, people, no. you know. <laughs> and uh, so you can think about how many layers and how much thought it took to, to actually develop some of these materials that are available, whether it's lenticulars for ultra short throws or these multi-layered materials for for, for ambient light rejecting on traditional projectors. There's a lot of science that is actually going into these screens. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of times, they, that's why they cost what they cost. And you go, why mm -hmm. can't I just paint my wall white? Because it doesn't have all this science in it, that's why. And, it, and exactly. there's no way you're gonna get some white paint. I don't care what kind of white paint it is to make it do all the things that you can do with a actually properly designed screen. So um, the one thing that you also sent me is these, we talk about applications. And one of the things that I like about uh, Elite Screens, Jaime, is the fact that you have applications for, you have solutions for everyone. So we just talked about, you know, ambient light rejecting for ultra short though for consumers, for that, um, for conference rooms, for people who need a portable solutions, like maybe a salesperson for events and things like that. And then we also talk about this classroom applications. So I'm actually actually have one of these that I'm going to begin doing a review on, and uh, and and these are uh, you see them in classrooms a lot, right? And um right. and some boardrooms and stuff like that. So what type of material is this one? Yeah, this is a CLR2 material, and this material here is also ambient light rejecting for ultra short throw and short throw. So we've mm -hmm. modified the print, if you will, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it can accept light from a short throw projector as well. And this material is actually not as sensitive as the Dark Star USC and the Dark Star USC 2, which have uh, these like uh, lenticular uh, structures, which can be easily damaged. We wanted to um, further and enhance this this technology, and we we put a laminate coating on it so that we can also have the capability of being a dry a dry erase product. So that's why you're able you're able to write on it. It's scratch resistant. You can't damage it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this so you can use it as a whiteboard. It works well for with interactive projectors. So that I have to have this because I have an Epson that I still need to do. Uh, that's an interactive <laughs> projector, and I need a, I need a whiteboard. So I called I called Jaime and he took care of me. So I actually have a a whiteboard to do the review because my old boss Art said, hey, you should do a education pro a, a interactive projector, but oh. oh. If you don't have a whiteboard for him, it don't really work. It's, it can be quite difficult. So no wonder why he said, "Hey, you do this review." So, um, so, so yeah. So now I actually have a, a whiteboard that I can actually do these interactive um, um, education projector reviews in, on art. You know. So, all right. So, so let's see if there's any questions. Like I said, I. We are only talking about just a small selection of your materials. So if, if someone has questions, you should really check out EliteScreens.com. It's a pretty easy place to find. And, uh, and these guys will help you find the right material for your application. Because we just talked about ultra short throw and ambient light rejecting, but I have a reference white. I have one of their white reference screen, screens in my theater. Um, I chose the white one because Jaime offered me a variety of different options, but because I wasn't sure what screen out projector I was gonna throw on it, the benefit of a white screen is whether I can use it for a short throw, 
standard projection, everything else. I got to turn my lights down, but I can actually at least use it. And I know that I can get consistent performance from it. But you guys have a huge variety of, of screens. You want tap tension. You want big, large 235 cinema type stuff. All that stuff is available um, from Elite elite screens. So there was one more demonstration, one more video you gave me. Yes. And what this is, is another one of those real world applications that we talked about, right? So this is actually a screen in a, in a actual room and you can see that material on top, the white square, you can see how much extra contrast because contrast is king. The difference between blacks and whites is what gives you color and, and, and detail. And the more you can preserve the contrast, um, the better off you are. And being able to reject ambient light increases the ability of, for the contrast. Correct. That's actually a short throw, a 0 0.5 length throw ratio. Yes. It's, it's a laser projector. So like I mentioned in that video, um, there's a lot of customers that, hey, you know what? I don't have a budget for an ultra short throw. Do you have anything mm -hmm. coming out that's ambient light rejecting for my short throw? And so we've okay. been able to develop a material that goes up to 0 0.5 length throw ratio mm -hmm. where you can. And this is this is a material right here, um, actually. Okay. Uh, okay. It looks like the other ones, except that mm -hmm. there's technology in there that allows us to actually put it in a manual tap tension format. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about uh, finding a plug, mm -hmm. running cable, more cable. And it's a manual pull down tap tension. Mm -hmm. This is a material right here, actually. Actually, I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up, um, Jaime, because I forgot. I didn't even think about that. Because first, you have your standard throw. Like right now, I have this big Epson, right? And mm -hmm. right now, from my 100 inch screen, it's probably 10, 12 feet away. Okay, 10 feet away. Right now, 10, 12 feet away. Then you go to ultra short throw, where for that same screen, it would be seven, eight inches away. Yeah. Um, a lot of professional short throw screen um, projectors, like I've done some Epson industrial pieces, are shorter throw. They're not ultra short throw. So a hundred inch screen, you're probably maybe two feet, three feet away, or mm -hmm. even about two feet away, right? So there's sure. act, so you got to make materials for the traditional projector um, or a ultra short throw projector. And then the commercial short throw projector, and that just shows how many how many options and how many um, different things that you guys have available in order to to um, to get the job done. I didn't even think about the fact that there's the I didn't even think about the short throw. So we always talk about. So I guess there's long throw. Actually, there's long throw, medium throw, short throw, and ultra short throw. And you got to have you got to think. And all of those is different types of screen material you can utilize. So I didn't even. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, so that would be something that's coming out soon. Um, and yes, we've answered our customers' request to give them an ambient light rejecting for short throw. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. okay. So so um, I'm going to have to have you come back and talk about more screens because, like I said, I mean, we probably only talked about less than a quarter <laughs> of, uh, of the options you have available. So Gary, one of our biggest uh, supporters, says, mm -hmm. um, Jaime, thank you for showing us your Elite Screen material and what a difference it makes to see it in real time. Maybe we'll come back and you can, and we'll do another one of these, just you and I, that we can post okay. on our site about mm -hmm. just the cinema, the, the stuff for like really like dedicated home theater um, yeah. options that you guys actually make, okay? Yeah, I'll give you a teaser now. We're working on a new acoustic material here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You keep you keep pulling out new <laughs> new items. So what's that right there? Okay, so what's a, an acoustically transparent material that we're developing right now uh -huh. uh, for the ultra 4K world, ultra 4 4K, ultra short throw 4K. Ultra short uh, okay. world because a lot of So that is an ultra are, short throw acoustically transparent, transparent. Huh? material. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of people are complaining. Where am I going to put my center speaker at? I, I want a short throw and I get more ray. Yeah. Can you help me, please? Well, this <laughs> one we're developing and it has a black packing already. And nice. the only thing that I need is for somebody to help me measure the acoustics. So if you have a friend out there, let, let me know. I'll do <laughs> you know what? You call 100 you, sample. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I do have, I mean, 
I have my my day job actually deals with this type of stuff. So um, email me after this, and I will. Gary's like, I'll do it. But anyway, um, but uh, <laughs> email me after this, and I will put you in contact with someone that would be happy to um, to give you some acoustic measurements on that on that particular screen. Okay? Awesome, great, excellent, um, Jaime. Thank you for all thank of you. the information you provided, and thank you for um, the sneak peeks at some of the cool stuff that you um, are are developing. Thank All you everybody right. for coming again. Thank you um, Jaime and Elite Screens for, for supporting this event. Take care and I will talk to you soon. Thank you as well, thank you.